Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forest Bushcraft. This is going to be a bit of a redo. Um, first part of this video got lost due to some computer gremlins. So I'm having to reshoot it. But in a nutshell, I like a trade gun or a, a 62 caliber or what we call day a 20 gauge. And I have a long history of it. I did living history for nearly 20 years where I carried a two liter chase as a trade gun. And it was my favorite woods loafing gun, muzzle loading gun, and etc. But it all started with an earlier gun. And that's this gun. Now this is a single shot, 20 gauge, made by, I believe, H&R. Now the name on it is Diamond Arms Company but it was made in, for St. Louis, Missouri, somewhere around 1905. And it was my great-grandfather's, and then it was my grandfather's. And this was passed to me at age four. Now, if you notice the stock shape, the drop at the cone, it has an actual rear sight, a notch cut into it. A large bead that's kind of flat on the sides a little bit. These guns, same as today, except this was the modern incarnation at that time of the trade gun, like my flintlock muzzleloader had been. And so, when I inherited this gun, this gun was only one step removed from muzzleloaders. It's got a rear sight so that it could shoot accurately with the pumpkin ball, round balls. We'll get to that in a minute. But because of this gun, and it taught me so much about hunting, I took my first deer with it. All my first small game was with this gun. I fed myself for a couple of years when I was a young man living alone, single, with this gun. And it laid the foundation for my appreciation of firearms. But more than that, it's the link back to my forefathers. Because when this was bought, this was meant to be like a trade gun. In fact, the family story goes that my great-grandfather had inherited a flintlock trade gun probably a Northwest style from his grandfather and that he bought this gun to be his modern upgrade. So having said that, I will now show you the modern trade gun that I now have. It's a single shot 20 and we'll talk about it. When I got this gun uh, when I was four, when I was 13 I refinished it. And upon taking the buttstock off, I found a survival kit in the bottom. Some matches, some fish hooks, a few other things that had been put there by my great-grandfather. I still have it. So, of course, in my modern one, I carry a kit as well. Okay, now let me shift to the, reg the video I already shot. Enjoy it, guys. Thanks for watching. Okay, guys, here's my trade gun. And here is the buttstock survival kit I have inside. I have two number six shots, two of my fire straws, and a bottle of unbreakable polycarb full of waterproof matches with a striker bar. That rides inside the buttstock for an emergency. When nothing else, I've got at least two shots and the ability to make fire. That's the buttstock survival kit. Okay, guys, that's my gun, or my trade gun as I call it. I carried a trade gun for so many years as far as living history that taking one out in the modern time it just feels more comfortable to think of it that way. Trade guns were an important part of this nation's history and it was the most common, common man gun there was. So I don't feel like I'm stretching it a lot to say that this is a modern trade gun. Now all I gotta do is take my quick arm and screwdriver, which I always carry. A couple of quick turns and tighten that bit of screw, and we're good. Now, put that loop back up around it. <clears throat> I started this with the idea of making a trade gun, a companion for me. Because my old near and dear Betsy is now too cherished a relic to me to risk taking it out in a canoe or losing it. It's something that's irreplaceable to me. Probably not worth 50 bucks, but it's irreplaceable. 
replaceable to me. This modern version is what I carry today. Now, I stripped the finish off by taking a piece of broken glass, actually in a fish aquarium glass, and shaving the finish off. I found this to be one of the fastest ways to do it instead of sanding for two hours or chemical strippers. I just put it up there flat like you take a knife and flat plane it off of there, getting all the curves and everything. Once it's all off, then I take steel wool and light sandpaper and smooth out where I scrape. I can do it in 15 minutes, usually. All the wood. I then applied a light finish to it that I liked. It was a little bit of uh, stain darkening, and then I went over it with about eight coats of tongue oil. It's a non-matte, not glare, something that's not going to attract attention in the wood. I don't want it to be, you know, bright, shiny, here I am. I put brass tacks on it because it's mine, and my trade guns all had some sort of decoration on it. The slings, like I spoke of, are just regular little eye bolts like you pick up at a hardware store. Screwed them in. Yes, I know they make fancy ones. These were five cents a piece, and they'll hold just as good as the other. Then... The leather strap is actually part of a Sam Brown belt. Now, for those of you that don't know, it's a military belt that you've got a, a, a belt, and this goes over the shoulder and hooks to the back. Picked it up surplus for like a buck. It's got a buckle adjustment. I've got an easy on and off on both ends and swivel attachment. i got lots of ways to attach this. <coughs> so when I'm riding in a canoe or whatever, I can quick and easily attach it to the canoe. I take my sling off because it's just going to be in the way and I go and leave this front sling swivel up here. To it, I attach a quick clip, like a dog leash, hooked solidly to my canoe. That way if that canoe flips or whatever, my gun is still attached to the canoe. I'll have to fish it back out, but it's attached. I then take, and here on the line, I, at the pole itself, I'll tie a bow line that I can grab and pull. Quick disconnect. That way the gun doesn't slop around as I'm moving the canoe. And it stays stationary, but if I need it, I grab, clip, and it's mine. Just handy and easy, quick and easy. Now, it's a modified choke. I don't exactly know what to call it. It is not a youth. The stock length is actually normal stock length, but the barrel's a youth barrel, and it came like this. I don't know if it's a special order or what, but... I found it sitting in a shop for a decent price and picked it up. Or maybe somebody retrofitted a regular size stock onto what had been their used stock. I don't know. I know it fits me perfectly and it's just the proper size and it's short and handy and it's got a modified choke in it. I've already worked on it and I've hand loaded, found the load it likes, etc. I like number sixes in it. And then I'll get you a close up here in a minute. Remember I showed you that old Betsy has a rear sight? Well, I took and put me a piece of masking tape over this. And shooting slugs out of it, I had drawn a straight line down the middle of it and used it until I figured out moving that line until I found out the basic, safe, pardon me, best place to put it. So now when I bring the gun up, my eye sees that line which starts right there at the top of the channel and goes all the way to the breech. It doesn't weaken anything. But my eye can see it as a line. Now, say this is the line. Here is the bead. If it's lined up, it's straight. If I offset it this way or this way, it allows me to put English. So if I'm leading a bird or something, putting that line allows me to English. Shooting it with slug, it allows me to have know that I'm straight. I'm not canting the gun or whatever, and it improves my accuracy. I have shot this gun out to 75 yards, and I can stay pretty easily on something that big, which means the chest of a deer. That's all I need. I'm not going to try to compete with this at a thousand yards. I mean, it's a shotgun. But I have loaded up round musket balls. Actually, it's trade gun bullets. They're 60 caliber round lead balls that you buy to go into a, a uh, Northwest trade gun, a two liter chase. That's what I used to have. They load into a 20 gauge shell and become the old fashioned, you guessed it, pumpkin ball, which means you make a musket out of it. I load it and I put a card wad underneath it and a cushion wad just like I'd load it into the gun if it was a muzzle loader. And I'm shooting it out to 70 yards, 65, 70 yards and staying in a circle about like that. That's all I need. This isn't going to be a long range gun. In this environment, 
<coughs> 20, 30 yards is the average. If I'm hunting with it, I'm going to be, you know, that tree right there, right there, right there. I'm in thick cover down here. I don't need a long range gun. And for the thick eastern woodlands, this is my choice. And like we got thunder coming. Well, guys, I appreciate you uh, watching my videos. And I appreciate everything you do for me, all the support you give me. Please make comments, suggestions, whatever you want. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.